2011-2012 budget process. Um, I think we'll begin, Ken offered to uh, begin by giving us a brief review of the overview of the budget. As you know, uh, <clears throat> the superintendent's recommended budget calls for a 2.2% increase in expenditures, uh, or $447,719. That equates to a 1.9% increase in property taxes. And that's just for the school portion. Uh, we don't know what the municipal budget, but what we're responsible for, if this budget was approved by the school board would increase property taxes 1.9%. Um, and I think on the average or the median price home in Cape Elizabeth, that equates to $85 a year. Um, there are several significant increases in the recommended budget uh, in about six or seven different areas, and there are three um, decreases, which allows that budget to come in at 2.2%. And just quickly, the drivers of this budget, if you will, the significant ones are salary and benefits are up about $406,000. Now, that account normally uh, would be six or $700,000, but we have a tentative agreement with the Teachers Association, as you know, uh, for a very modest um, salary increase. So it allows that line to be about two hundred dollars or $300,000 less than it would be in most normal years. So uh, the salary and benefit increase, that's where all the money is in school budgets. You know, it's over 80% of our budget. And at the next workshop, <clears throat> the school board will be going over those lines um, so that there's complete understanding of staffing. That's, that's, that's really where the school budget is. There's some things in the buildings and <clears throat> facilities budget that um, were we really don't have that much control over. I mean, you know what the price of oil is doing, and we probably, when we put the budget together, uh, budgeted a, a conservative $3 a gallon, and that's something by the time you bring this budget to the town council, you might want to adjust, uh, because right now it's, it's much more expensive than that. The other thing in that, those lines, the property insurance is going up $7,000, and we have the new boiler, which, as I mentioned the other night, that's uh, going to increase uh, that account 32000 But that line would be a lot higher also if we didn't have the outstanding assistance of the town council. Um, so though building and facilities is up $100,000, um, those three areas are why. Every other account that uh, is in Greg's area of responsibility is in at the same amount as previous years or less. Uh, instructional support is up $47,000 because of the out-of-district tuition when you compare apples to apples, um, because we were using federal stimulus money to fund some contracted services. You know, it shows that it's up 98000 but an apple-to-apple -apple comparison is just the 47000 for out-of-district tuition. Athletics is up $18,000. And I know at our next meeting you'll want to go over that to make sure you have absolute clarity. But the main reason why that is up is to make sure that we're in uh, compliance with Title IX regulations and also increasing the trainer. Historically, we've been over budgeted um, in that area. And what we're budgeting or recommending that you budget next year is a more realistic accounting for uh, what we spend. And then the only other thing that's driving this budget up is transportation, and that's, you know, that's the diesel fuel. That's, uh, again, we've got a number in there that you might want to actually go in the opposite direction and increase. And the decreases in this budget, contingency is down $300,000. It's not that last year the school board increased, you know, that area by a large amount. <clears throat> I mean, last year the school board did increase the contingency account because we received some extra state funding. Um, we're not going to have that extra state funding, so the contingency line is back at what it um, has been historically. Which, as I pointed out, that's, that's an area when times get better, you've really got to increase. But because, you know, carrying a $70,000 contingency in a $22 million budget is pretty thin. Um, so 
it would be nice to have at least uh, double or triple that amount. But I don't think this is the economy where you can, you can start doing that. Um, believe it or not, the economy will improve and you'll be able to actually increase some lines like that, but not this year, probably not next year. Debt service is down 34,000 and um, there's some other accounts that are down about $8,000. So most of the accounts, I mean the story of this budget is the evaporation of federal stimulus money, but the other part uh, story of this budget is almost every other line that we can possibly control is at funding levels of previous years. So that's, that's the quick overview. Thank you. So what we had wanted to do, because there are a number of, this is a, this is a large budget, and we have three workshops in order to bring some order to the process, we wanted to take a look at, and we knew we were getting a late start tonight, we wanted to take a look at some of the areas that might be most easily dealt with. Um, and I sent an email to the board earlier uh, last week describing what those are, and Ken repeated those, that list today, so um, for the benefit of Everyone else, that list is technology, uh, debt service, health services, volunteer services, and office of the superintendent. So what, we're, what we'll be looking at tonight are those areas, um, and we've got three other accounts that we'll get to if we have time, um, but we'll otherwise be looking at those areas, um, and um, in particular, we're looking at the non-salary and benefit um, elements of those accounts. <coughs> Salary and benefits are one of the one of the big ticket item accounts that we'll be addressing in a future workshop. So, John, I miss, I'm sorry, I was trying to read. What was the last one, the big ticket item we're going to cover in a future workshop? <coughs> I didn't hear it. So we're looking. These these accounts exclude salaries and benefits. For example, the technology department budget excludes the salaries and benefits of the technology department personnel, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and if we get to the, the three schools, high school, uh, middle school, and Pond Cove, we'll be looking at the operational budget exclusive of salaries and benefits. Could I ask one question? It's an overview question. Sure. We're going to try and cover tonight. Are we not going to try and cover tonight? Um, uh, so I guess I'll generalize and call it our three-year plan. Is that something we're not going to cover tonight? We're not covering that tonight. And I assume we're not going to cover some of the other items like contingency funds and undesignated funds. And uh, uh, I still, I think I got an explanation. What we'll do is we'll go over the, the course of the, the three workshops. We'll go through, if you look at page three of your, which is I believe the page you're open to, page three of the budget book, it lists that the, um, departments or accounts, the major departments or accounts in the budget. And what we're going to do is one by one go through those accounts. Mm -hmm. And tonight we're, we're addressing f the first five, not the first five in order, but those five that I listed. Could I just, um, I, I can tell this to you some other time, but there are two items that are not on this list that I think need to be discussed, which is the Medicaid monies we get and the I guess they call them the undesignated reserves, the undesignated fund. That, that's an item that's going to be vastly fluctuating. We're using. I think we need to. Is that part of the three-year plan discussion? Yes. I see Ken nodding. Yes. Okay. Because yep. <laughs> I, I may not be able to say the full time tonight. Those are the items I really care about. The items we're going to talk about tonight. They're not on those li this list because those are revenue items, right? And I, I'm just saying I, I may have to leave early, but the items you have listed, I was very satisfied with the reports that were made. I don't have any questions on that. I do have questions on the you, you, You're not going to have any questions tonight? You're tell, <laughs> telling me that now? <laughs> so That's great. Do we have a notary? I, 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 <laughs> I, I will question your sanity for actually challenging me to these questions. Oh, no, we're going to be here till 11. <laughs> that, okay. That's just plain foolish. Like, are, there any, are there any other overview questions? Um, no, I don't have any. OK. So then we will move to technology, the technology budget. Um, and what I'll do is just ask the members of the board if there are questions about the technology budget. 
Um, I had one question around um, professional development for you, Gary, and this is just a clarifying question around um, the Cape Elizabeth South Portland Summer Academy. Have we always paired up with South Portland for that? For the last two to th three years we have. Mm -hmm. Prior to that we had done our own thing. Oh, okay, so it's, it's a collaborative math, or, you know, a collaborative effort between the two communities? It is. They provide some instructors and they also provide some funding okay. to help support it. Great. Okay. That's great. I was just curious about that and curious about, I know David mentioned um, some of the Google um, uh, information or that, you know, moving toward Google and do you have any idea how much money that that's saving the district by having, by moving us to um, a free service like that and, and cloud computing? And well, we, we moved to uh, Google for email. We had a uh, previous email server was first class. Mm -hmm. The annual license fees for that was around $5,000 a year mm -hmm. and it was hosted on a server here that we had to buy and maintain. Mm -hmm. um, Google's email is hosted by Google. So I was at a stage last year where I needed to upgrade that server too. So we probably saved about eight grand or so last year or this year just by moving to a new email service. Mm -hmm. um, Google Apps for Education provides a suite of tools much like a Microsoft Office type suite of tools. Um, that cost me, to put Microsoft Office on a computer cost me $52 per license. So if you're looking at 1,000 computers, it, you know, there's $52,000 right there. It's, a, it's potentially a teacher. Um, so we're moving more towards Google and open source alternatives. There's an open, open office alternative that we may need a few Microsoft Office licenses for some administrative key people, key personnel, but I think uh, we're moving towards the less expensive alternatives. Okay. Thank you. And if I could add, it, it should also be freeing up technology department people to, rather than installing Microsoft software on machines. Correct. Um, Correct. You, once you've installed a web browser, you have access to Google's applications. And right. There's traditional software you install on a machine. And of course, there's always patches and updates and things like that that need to be applied. So, the, you know, all of the, the labor that's involved with that disappears too. Google's updates happen by Google, and they just happen to appear in the browser. That's great. <coughs> Other questions? Ah, uh, yes. On the um, staff development <coughs> line, um, it's three thousand eight hundred dollars for. For the in the proposed budget, is this the only uh, money that will be allocated to staff development or professional development, or are there uh, dollars associated with salaries and benefits? For for technology for the district, that only that amount includes the the academy that we do with South Portland, that week long academy, uh, which any staff can go to at no cost. We provide that and host that here. And it provides about a dozen people to go to a local uh, statewide conference that's, I'm, the, I'm biased, I'm the conference chair. I think it's a very <laughs> good conference and it's a good, um, it's a good bargain for, for, they get a good quality conference for what we pay, um, less than $100 per participant. So those, basically those two things are the biggest chunk of the professional development money uh, my thought and I don't know how this works but in 2008 2009 we had about ten thousand dollars in professional development and I believe that was before technology integrators now your staff is larger we've reduced professional development by almost 60 percent even though your staff is large and I think given our reliance on technology and it's a fantastic way to reduce costs in other areas um, and I think that's something we should consider is increasing our investment in professional development further supported by we're moving from Microsoft which probably has more customer ser service than Google which is more self-service so that's one area I think 
Um, I know we have a difficult uh, economic environment, but the return you get on professional development technology is